you're watching Gears. Brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. Hey, welcome to Gears. You know, one of the biggest challenges that you can face on a project is when you start out with a plan or an idea and then something happens that completely blows that out of the water. You know, maybe the frame is rusted. Maybe the vehicle is not what you thought it was. And now you have to reevaluate the whole project and maybe even change directions. Yeah, it's a dilemma and it's something that we get questions about all the time. So today we're going to address that exact scenario and show you how to make the right decisions and hopefully still come out ahead on your project. Okay, what we have here is a 1967 Jeepster convertible that I found in a garage where it had been pretty much sleeping for a couple of decades. Now I took a quick look at the odometer and it looked like it had just a hair over 100,000 miles on it, which makes it the perfect candidate for a custom build. And that was the plan. I was going to do a motor swap and put in bigger axles and wheels and tires and do all kinds of cool Jeepy stuff to it. So I was looking at a level three resto mod style project until I got it back to the shop here and started looking at it closely. Looking past the cheap repaint that somebody did years ago, the old Jeep started to reveal some secrets. First of all, a quick look at the VIN tag showed it was an ultra rare 8701 deluxe convertible that had the factory Continental kit in back, along with the short fiberglass shelf and the non-functional tailgate, as well as the aluminum side trim. The Buick V6 engine and the turbo 400 transmission with the console were also top options for the Jeepster in 67, as was the power top. However, it was the tightness in the original door hinges and the steering and the lack of arm and footwear on the doors and the floors that made me start to suspect that this was not the old beater that we originally thought it was. The final clue was the original wiring under the hood and the assembly marks on the firewall put on by the workers as it rolled down the assembly line in 1967. Yep, there's no doubt about it. That's not 108,000 miles on the odometer. It's 8,000 original miles on the clock. <laughs> now we got a problem. A first year Jeepster with only 8,000 original miles on it is not only rare, but it also has the potential to be very valuable in original condition. So there's the dilemma. What do you do? <laughs> well, I always say it's ultimately your vehicle. You can do what you want with it. But to cut something like this up into a trail rig would just be crazy. So if you are bound and determined to have a trail rig out of a Jeepster, your best bet would be to sell this to a restorer, take the money that you make, buy yourself an old beat up body and build your trail rig. However, if you decide to keep the project, your next decision is how do you plan on restoring it? And you basically have two choices here. Number one, keep it all original. Number two, do some modifications to it that don't detract from the originality, but make it more drivable. And if you're a collector, the first way is probably the way to go. If you want to enjoy the vehicle and drive it, the second way is how you want to go. That's what we're going to do on this one. Okay, once you've assessed your project and decided what direction you're going to go with it, the next step is to decide what level of restoration you're going to do. And on this, we're going to do a level one. Get it running and driving safely. Fortunately, the old V6 seems to be relatively untouched, but somebody did add an electric fuel pump on the firewall, and there's evidence of an electrical fire with burnt and bare wires everywhere, which is a mess. And that'll all need to be fixed before we even think about putting a battery in and trying to crank this thing. So the first step is to start tearing things apart and remove anything that we're gonna replace. This includes all the hoses, the alternator, the fuel pumps, the wires and the distributor, and the carburetor. Now, this is a great example of why it's a good idea to replace gaskets on a vehicle that's been sitting for a long time, even if it has low miles like this one. 
Look at this old gasket, how it's turned to dust. This would leak like crazy. So now's the time to fix it. Now, the last step is to pull the intake and the valve covers. And an 8,000 mile engine should have no sludge and be super clean. <laughs> Look at that. That is like right out of the machine shop. And that is awesome. Can't wait to see under the intake. super clean. Got the cam and everything in there. Man, those ports are just perfect. In a world of economic uncertainty, there will always be a need for quality tools and people who can use them. That's why becoming a Cornwell tool dealer is one of the best career moves you can make. With routes available all across the nation, it's a great way to be your own boss, supply high quality tools to professionals, and make some real money. If you're tired of working for someone else, have the drive to succeed, and want a career that can be successful no matter what happens on Wall Street, there's a Cornwell tool truck with your name on the side. Classic car owners, make your headlights over twice as bright with Holly Retrobright LED Headlights. A plug-in replacement for those dim halogen seal beams, Retrobright maintains that classic look and lasts six times longer. Stay safe and click the link below to learn more. Redesigned from the ground up, MSD's Ultra 6A boasts a significant size reduction, making it 60% smaller, 50% lighter, and 35% more efficient. Find out about MSD's latest products at holly.com. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where you can see we're up to our elbows in a level one restoration on a 67 Jeepster that has just a hair over 8,000 miles on it. Yeah. Now, I know some of you guys are probably looking at this going, man, that is a lot of stuff. I thought a level one was easier than that. No? A level one is get it running and driving safely, which is a lot more involved than just pouring gas down it and trying to start the engine. So we're not messing with the paint. We're not doing anything with the top, the interior, no fabrication, none of that kind of stuff. That all comes in levels two, three, four, and five. A level one is all mechanical. So it's fuel system, electrical, cooling system, brakes, suspension, that kind of thing. So as you can see, we pulled off everything that's old and crusty that either needs to be replaced or rebuilt, including the intake and the valve covers so we can replace the gaskets. Of course, even on a level one, you can expect to have some challenges in the project. For example, this original intake manifold originally used two studs and two bolts to hold the carburetor in place. But if you look closely at that stud, you see how that's rusted and tiny right there? That's just waiting to break. Fortunately, we were able to get it out without breaking it off. But the second one, not so lucky. So we eventually had to put in a helicoil so we had metal threads back into the intake. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, but that little guy right there can absolutely ruin your afternoon. It's gonna take all of the tools on this table just to fix that problem. Because first of all, you need to take a grinder, grind off the broken piece so everything is flat with the flange. Then, take your punch, punch down in the center of the stud, then take a drill, drill down in the center of the broken stud, and then take your easy out, stick it down in there, and hopefully you'll be able to work the broken piece out. Now, if it comes out, ah, you're good to go. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to drill it out and put in some new threads. Now, how do you do that? Well, you pick up a helicoil kit, and then you take a drill bit in the proper size and drill out all the nastiness. Then you take the tap that's supplied with the kit and tap the new hole. Then you take the threaded metal helicoil insert and put it down in the hole which will then give you threads in metal where they belong. Now this kind of surprise can absolutely drive you crazy if you're not prepared for it. But that's the point of these kind of projects, to help you solve problems so you can move on to the next levels. Okay, with everything cleaned up and painted, we are ready to start putting stuff back together. But that broken bolt should be a good reminder of not to reuse your old hardware. Look at this old stuff. 
That one there I thought was gonna break in the head. <laughs> that would have been a bad day. So there's no reason to reuse this, especially when companies like ARP have all kinds of kits to completely change all the hardware and whatever engine you're working on. And the quality is far better than what you're gonna find down at the local hardware store. <laughs> Now, if you're working on a project like this, especially something that's a little odd, it is extremely important that you find a company that specializes in parts for your specific vehicle. And for the Jeepster, we went to a place called Jeepster Man because they carry everything that you can imagine for those Jeepster vehicles, but not just those. Any kind of Jeeps from Willys to Kaisers to AMCs. And the reason that that's important is that they will have every kind of option that you can do to that kind of vehicle so you can choose how you want to put it together. Whether you do an original restoration or slapping a V8 in it, they'll be able to help you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. For the carburetor, you can take your original carburetor, buy yourself a rebuild kit, and rebuild your original carburetor. If you don't want to do that, you can buy a completely rebuilt carburetor from Jeepster Man and just bolt it on. If you don't want to do that, maybe you want something a little more performance oriented, you can jump up to this Weber two barrel conversion. Now this bolts right in place of those Rochesters and even has its own special air cleaner. So out of the three, this is the route that we're going to go. But we will keep our original carburetor just in case we ever want to take it back original, which I'm sure we won't. Now just because this is a bolt on carburetor does not mean it's a bolt on deal. Mm -mm. Check this out. You're gonna need all these extra parts. You're gonna need another throttle cable. You're gonna need a fuel filter. You're gonna need a fuel pressure regulator and all kinds of hoses and fittings to make this fit. So bear that in mind when you're doing this kind of conversion. The fuel tank is also something that you shouldn't overlook because they were prone to rust and problems even back in the day. So rather than mess with an old rusty tank, we got a replacement tank from Jeepster Man that's designed to bolt right in place of that original tank. Now it comes with the filler neck and the vent tubes and the hardware and the brackets, everything that you're gonna need to bolt it in. A replacement tank is one of the best investments you can make on an older vehicle. Okay, with a fuel system laid out and going together, we're one step closer to driving this thing down the road. A successful automotive project takes planning and organization. But instead of using an old tablet or notebook, there's the Gears Deluxe Project Planning Book. This was designed to help you lay out a project, the parts, the tools, costs, and keep it organized with colored tabs, a pouch for receipts, and even a place to attach photos. If you decide to sell the vehicle, it serves as a complete history of what's been done. If you have a project or plan on starting one, the Gears Project Planning Book is the best way to lay it out and make it happen. If you look out your window right now and count the vehicles that are running up and down the road, chances are the majority of them is going to be some sort of a truck or an SUV. Matter of fact, trucks and SUVs are so popular that the traditional car is something we're starting to see less and less of. And if you venture out to a car show or an event, there is a similar thing happening there too. With custom trucks becoming more and more popular every year, and some bring in incredible amounts of money at auction. But it wasn't always that way. No, <laughs> matter of fact, for the longest time, people just considered trucks to be old utility vehicles. They were not even invited to the custom car party unless they were bringing the food. Remember, when the car was first invented, it was a novelty, only owned by rich people to zip around in and look impressive. Then along came Henry Ford, who not only made the Model T affordable to everyone as transportation, but he also did a truck version so the working man could carry his junk. This divided the automotive world into two classes. The car that was designed to carry people from point A to point B in comfort with special seats and suspensions and engines and climate control, et cetera, et cetera. And the truck that was made for towing and hauling junk and working. So trucks were tough, they were rough, they were loud, and something to be beat on and parked out back. 
not out front with all the nice cars. However, that began to change in the late 50s when Ford released the Ranchero and Chevy dropped the El Camino on the public. Both were an attempt to blend the car and the truck into something more sporty. And slowly, over the years, the OEMs came out with some great body styles and they added more refinements and more creature comforts like you would find in a car. Driving on the road, gravel or hard surface. But even with the refinements, the truck always retained its rough and tumble image. As well as off the road, you're always in four wheel drive. Because trucks, trucks were consistent in an ever changing automotive world. Front axle makes it easy to maneuver in tight places. When cars got big, trucks kept hauling. When cars got small, trucks kept working. When cars got weird, <laughs> trucks kept pulling. And because of that, almost everybody has some sort of a truck story or memory, because this is literally what we grew up in with our grandparents or our friends or our family or that crazy uncle. And when you go to a car show today, chances are you're gonna drive some sort of truck to it. And the custom trucks you're gonna see are amazing. Take a look. Of course, original style restorations have always been popular. And with companies supplying so many quality reproduction parts, an original style restoration on a truck is a great first project. If you're into custom vehicles, the lowered truck is incredibly popular for the cruising crowd. And it's a great way to show off your fabrication skills and blend original and aftermarket parts. If you're more into hot rods, there is nothing like a hot rod pickup to smoke some tires and get your blood pumping. And if you like things rough and dirty, the lifted 4x4 truck is the only way to scratch that itch and not get arrested. Did you feel that? However, there is another variation of the truck that can be overlooked, and that is the van. Not only are these rolling canvases of artistic expression, but they can also be decked out with most of the comforts of home. All of that in a rolling platform that will allow you to go anywhere you want. How cool is that? Yep. The truck has evolved a lot over the years, but one thing that'll never change, no matter what happens with cars and other forms of transportation, the truck is just going to keep on trucking because we're always going to need something to tow and haul with and carry our junk in. And there is nothing cooler than a truck. Can't get enough gears? Make sure to check out the Tales of a Gearhead podcast, where Stacy brings a lifetime of automotive knowledge, friendships, and expertise to the listener. Also, check out our social media channels for updates and videos of Gears projects, as well as special contests, giveaways, and events. If you have a vehicle you want to enter into What Are You Working On, go to stacydavid.com and submit it. There's also the online store and tons of other Gearhead information that will encourage you to get out there, build something, and go drive it. And now, Seal Tech, brought to you by Steel Rubber Products, helping restore the car of your dreams. When you're building or restoring a vehicle, there's basically two scenarios when it comes to weather stripping, stuff that's available and stuff that is not. And if you're working on something that's more common, like a Camaro or a 40 Chevy, well, that's pretty much a matter of just buying the replacement weather stripping and putting it on. Pretty simple. But if you're working on something odd or rare, like a tow truck or an RV or virtually anything custom, you're going to find that direct replacement weather stripping can be almost impossible to find. But there is a solution. Take a look. These are sample packs from Steel Rubber. And as you can see, each one of these packs holds an assortment of weather stripping samples of stuff that they carry. So all you have to do is take your original weather stripping and just match it up to the rubber that you need and you're good to go. Now, what if you don't have original pieces of rubber? 
Say you're working on a kit car or an old vehicle where all the weather stripping is gone. Well, that's what these sample packs are for. You can get these packs, take the pieces out, put them in the doors or the trunk lid, whatever you're trying to fit, until you find that piece that's not only going to seal, but also channel that water away properly. Then you order a roll of it, either in the glue on or the peel and stick, and you go to work putting it on. When you look at all of the hundreds of different shapes and sizes of weather stripping that's out there, it can be a little overwhelming finding what you need. But if you've got some of these sample packs laying around, you can dial it in in just a few minutes. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Mark, and he is from South Dakota and he had an old beat up 70 El Camino. Now I say he had it because he'd had enough of it. He was ready to get rid of it. And a friend of his had a 75 Plymouth Scamp and they got together, started talking and they ended up trading the cars. Now, as you can see here, the Scamp is pretty solid. It was completely gutted and it didn't run, but it was exactly what Mark wanted. So he pulled it home started working on it. Now he says that his plan for this car is a semi-daily driver and a weekend warrior, a weekend fun car. Something he can take down the strip once in a while. So he said the wiring was first and they tore that out, fixed a bunch of problems there. And then he slowly started working through the interior, the brakes and other mechanical issues. Yeah, it sounds familiar to what we were showing you on this. Now he said as far as rust, the car needed a new trunk pan, which he put in. And he also welded in subframe connectors for those trips down the drag strip. Now, so far, that's all he's been able to do. But as you can see, it's a pretty good start on a cool car. So to recognize such a great project, we're going to give Mark one of these manual bead rollers from Woodward Fab. Now, it's not just the bead roller. You can see it comes with a whole bunch of dies to roll beads and flanges. And believe me, he's going to need that if he does any more metal work on that scamp. Now, we're also going to give him one of these project planning books so he can keep track of everything that he's done on that project. And we're going to give him a Gears t-shirt because he's obviously a real gearhead. Then we're going to give him a Holly gift card so we can get some Holly products to use on that project. And we're going to give him a gift card from Hot Shot Secret. And believe me, there's some stuff in here that he'll be able to use on that car. And then finally, we're going to give him a die cast copperhead. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this and get your project featured on the show, you got to send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation. You can also see Gears episodes for free on our YouTube channel and become a channel member. That way you get bonus content and you get early access to all the new episodes. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime for Gears and the Gears Restoration series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Obviously, you can see I've got a lot to work on here. Mark's got stuff to work on. What about you? Do you have a project? If you don't, you need to get one. Get out there and start working on something. Hopefully, this inspires you to get out and do it. We'll see you next time.